Good morning everyone. Today is a really exciting day and I'm going to be doing a little bit of vlogception here in this video because this is Maddie from the future. Um, I'll get into the vlog properly in a second but today is officially the day that I can share my cover for my cookbook Make It Vegan that comes out on the 28th of December. I will insert the cover here but you can also go look at it online and pre-order it. I'm so happy with this cover. It was a bit of a, a like a positive thing that came out of something that didn't quite work. So to tell you the kind of full story, we originally were going to use a food image from the shoot that we did in London where we did all the um, photographs of the recipes inside the book. And then when we put the designs together, we, well, I and the um, team at Hardy Grant decided that maybe we need a photograph of me that's... Um, going to really display what Make It Vegan means to my audience. So we did a shoot with my photographer Ali down in Cornwall and we captured loads of really fun photos and honestly I, it was quite difficult to pick because we got so many great pictures and I'm so in love with this one. It shows a recipe from inside the cookbook which is a vegan meatball recipe which just is so delicious, black bean meatballs. And I love the colour, I love how fun it is, I love the design. I'm just so over the moon with it. So if you haven't pre-ordered, then please go pre-order. Pre-orders matter so much to the success of a book. And even though it's a while till it comes out, if you pre-order it, it really matters. It means a lot to me. And also um, it means you're going to be the first person to get it. You'll be the first people who will get the book. And um, it's a great Christmas present if you're trying to get Christmas presents early, I know lots of people in my life do this where they get Christmas presents early, then it means someone who you know who maybe is going to go do Veganuary or someone who you know who's interested in vegan food or you want them to eat more plant-based foods and learn about how to cook with plants, this is the book for you because I intentionally made it to be accessible, to be easy, delicious and have loads of recipes in there that are just going to make you fall in love with vegan food and cooking with vegetables and cooking with plants that was the intention to make it vegan so yeah I, I really really thank anyone who has pre-ordered and anyone who is going to pre-order this is your reminder there's also fun giveaways coming up to do with pre-orders I did one when I first announced and yeah it's like opportunity for you to basically be involved a little bit more so yeah go check it out go pre-order it and thank you to anyone who already has and let's get into the vlog Good morning. I have just foraged a load of blackberries and the vegan in me just had to spend like <laughs> 15 minutes getting all the slugs and spiders. And when I was um, picking them, I would specifically, also there's another one, take out the bugs because I would feel bad that I'm like, I just feel bad. Like you think foraging is like a good thing to do, but then when you're picking, you realize just how many bugs are on them like there are literally hundreds of spiders that was actually the hardest part that the amount of massive spiders and bugs and stuff that are just on the blackberries the amount of slugs and snails on the blackberries is crazy but i've got a really good amount there are thousands of blackberries just down my road i literally just walked for an hour um, on a loop and the amount of them is insane <laughs> and um, you can see all the new ones coming through so it means that I can keep going back um, try different routes and stuff because we're very lucky where we live that on the part even like our house our garden has loads of blackberries so I put it in water because then I figure the bugs will come to the top and I can save them potentially anyway I'm gonna make croissants <laughs> because my Sainsbury's order isn't coming until I think two o'clock and I don't really have any um, food. Well, I mean, I do. I mean, I'm being ridiculous. I do. I have, I could make delicious porridge with blackberries on top, which is tempting. However, I just have a craving because I got these um, croissants the other day in Sainsbury's and um, yeah, I think that at some point, either in this vlog or the next vlog, 
probably the next vlog i'm gonna make blackberry and apple apple and blackberry crumble because we've got loads of apples in the in the garden from the trees and they need to be eaten so <laughs> i'm gonna collect a load give loads to my family and then make some apple and blackberry crumble with these blackberries because i have so many and i can get more and i want to freeze some as well for the winter and also make my own blackberry jam <laughs> This is the thing I really dislike about renovating is you get out of the shower, I feel all fresh and new. And then you have to put on like paint clothes. This is a really unfortunate, um, what's the word? Um, I can't think of the word, but this is a lovely shirt from Linen Fox. And then my copper uh, pipes in our house, they make everything that's white, get these horrible gold stains on them everywhere. It's all over it. On the back of it, um, where is the other one? On the back of it here, and especially this one on the shoulder, every time I wear it, it just looks like a dirty top, which it doesn't come out. I've tried bleach, tried vanish, tried everything. It's like, it's like stained it with copper. I've no idea, the uh, uh, plumber explained it to us if you have old pipes. So the only way to rectify it is literally to change all your pipes. So it's become a painting top. <laughs> and you get freshly washed and then you put on a grubby painting top. I've just showered and I've just rough dried my hair because I was doing this thing where every time I washed my hair, I was thinking I had to style it. And then I remember the days where um, I used to be so much more natural and I don't know what it is about getting older, but I like, I got into the curly girl method and then I got into using a Dyson and then I get into overnight heatless curls. And I forgot about the days when I would just wash my hair, rough dry it and let it dry and it looked fine. <laughs> And like, I kind of like that look of like, you know, just messy wavy hair, like who cares? I've got layers, I've got nice products. Like I use the Olaplex um, Bond Smoother and some mousse and it gets rid of the frizz and I've got layers in my hair now so it won't be as frizzy and it looks, looks nice. I've um, been doing my, you know, overnight oil treatments and I used a lovely hair mask in the shower. So like, I don't need to be doing the whole kind of like, scrunching their hair with a gel and using a diffuser and then all to just put it up anyway when I'm doing um, the painting. Like, who cares? I, I'm trying to figure out the order of which to do things today. That's sometimes the thing that stops me from starting is knowing which order to do things in because it's like 20 to 12 and I've had one of those mornings that it's just disappeared. I've done a bit of work and it's like, how is it already lunchtime? I need to do some cutting in. So I think I'm gonna do a bit of cutting in on the ceiling because that needs to dry before then I cut in with the blue. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. Hopefully it will only take me maybe like half an hour because I can do it really roughly. And um, then I'll make myself some lunch. If you missed the last video, you know that I was debating on colors. We've decided on Palmer Gray from Far and Bull. I got it color matched from Valspare with their V and Co line, this one here. Um, and then I got the woodwork in their woodwork paint because it was bank holiday. So the shop that sells Farron Bull was closed and B&Q didn't have this color. So this is Denim's and it's just too dark after all that time of debating, it's just too dark. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous color. It's a gray blue and it's the perfect gray blue. And it's kind of what I originally envisaged, not a bright blue, not a dark blue, not a light blue, just a mid blue that's um, got a bit of gray in it. Um, I did mention in the last video, I think that I'm annoyed with myself because I've miscoated and I used an old roller that was really thin and it's left all these lines. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna do a coat of the paint and we're gonna see all these little lines even though this is freshly plastered. So I'm gonna have to paint it and then sand it. I'm not gonna sand it first just because I feel like some of it won't be too visible. So I'll wait, I'll paint it and see what's visible. And I'm not gonna do more than one coat because the builders will come back, uh, do the carpentry, fit the lights, and then I'll do the final coat and all the touch-ups because it'll be pointless to completely paint because they'll just make mess. And he said, the builder said anyway, just do, just do your mist coat and one coat and then we'll come. And I got um, Wimborne White 
for the skirting and the doors. I'm not 100% sure on the doors yet, maybe, maybe. I can't decide whether to paint the doors blue or paint them white. So we'll see about that one. in all down here, 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 up here and over here. Not quite everything, um, I need a break, I'm having some lunch. Uh, uh, Roxy, that better be dry. My question now is whether I paint this, it's like I'm confused if I paint this blue and this blue or if I paint it the woodwork colour I've bought, which is Wimborne White, because obviously the stairs are going to go that colour. I mean, they kind of already are that colour. I think it's like a creamy white. Um, do I paint the ceiling there white or blue? And do I paint that blue? I'll um, probably, hello Zussi, probably ask my family. For lunch, I've just got my Sainsbury's delivery. I'm not having wine for lunch. <laughs> I've been unpacking and I've got the recycling here. We have, um, oddly actually, I didn't, order very well because this is kind of like food that I needed to eat so these um what are they called I forget Bayona bread I forget the kind of bread it was in the freezer and I've been meaning to eat them for so long I'm gonna make a loaf of bread this week um I just got the avocado delivered some delicious original kimchi from Complete Organics and then this is a tin of Heinz vegetable soup that has been in the cupboard for ages again that I just wanted to eat it because it's been there for so long topped with some of the nourish vegan parmesan and that is my lunch so i'm going to enjoy that i also had a bag of skips because i ordered some skips this is a throwback my sister had some the other day and i was like oh my gosh i'm buying skips uh that is amazing <laughs> So we're done with the cutting in. That was a massive job, more than any other cutting in job I think I've ever done because it's not a square room. There's so many little areas. I feel like I was doing that for like four hours, maybe maybe longer. It's been a bit bitty, but um, I'm gonna roll her tomorrow and then maybe do a bit of sanding because I don't think there's any point in me painting any of the woodwork until the builders have been because Inevitably, there'll be um, like mess from drilling and doing things. Oh, actually, yeah, no, I need, need to pa paint the bench. That'll be quite impactful because it's really dark blue right now. And I think when I paint it, it's gonna make the whole space feel very different. Um, I had a bit of a dilemma with this space about whether to paint it white or blue because it's a ceiling, but it's also a wall because it's the understairs. But when you're coming in from the back garden, it's quite visible and it kind of almost acts like a wall really because it's right there. So I decided to paint it blue and then the stairs and all the woodwork will be the off-white. So fingers crossed that's the right decision because I just felt if it was white like the ceiling, you walked in, there would just be a big thing of white, which would look strange. So yeah, I'm gonna make um, Melissa Hemsley's green pasta um, with some kale from the garden. Well, not kale, it's like the leaves from the cabbage. I'm just gonna go pick anything that I can find and it's one of my favorite recipes at the minute because it's so easy and I will show you 
later. But for now, I'm gonna go to the loo because I've just been on the phone to Alex for an hour. <laughs> I realise when we're not together how much we actually talk because we were just nattering away. And yeah, I miss him. He's been away a lot recently. He's coming back and forth and stuff. And But it's just weird being home alone for such a long period of time. Oh, I've got to roll her the ceiling. Oh, I could do that as well. Yeah. I really hope when I roll her that the marks that I've made from the mist coat aren't too bad and I don't have to do too much sanding. That would be very annoying. Hopefully it's just a few patches. In other news, Alex bought me a pair of Crocs because he has a pair. Though his do not have this obnoxious uh, logo on the side. I don't understand why these have Crocs written on the side like that. Is that normal? And then the top has like the lines. <laughs> they look very crocodile-like. And they've got like little ridges. I feel like his don't look like this. But I think they're on sale. So maybe that's why these ones are like this. Because they're the ones that nobody else wanted. But <laughs> they're very comfortable. So they're perfect around the house and for gardening. I just went down to the vegetable garden and just to give you some real talk because maybe some of you are wondering about our vegetable garden because obviously I spent quite a lot of time on it in spring um, and I kind of briefly touched on it on the video I did about gardening the other day. It makes me really depressed going down there because it's so overgrown and a lot of our garden is and I... I feel bad about it and it got, to, it got to the point in the summer that I felt so bad about it that I just stopped going down there at all. Um, and I just want to say this out loud because whenever I do, there's always somebody who says thank you for saying it because I feel the same. If there's a project, if there's something you started and then you weren't able to continue because of stress, because of work, because of mental health, that's okay. <laughs> and I'm saying this to myself because I'm a perfectionist and I'm an all or nothing person. So when things aren't perfect, I just, you know, out of sight, out of mind, and I um, get really wound up by them and it's, um, it's difficult. So because we were having work done at the house and because I was depressed and Alex was depressed and there's just like, our mental health wasn't great and there's just like, life is hard and I have other things happening, that just ended up not happening. And um, it's really sad. It makes me really sad when I go down there because of the amount of time I spent working on it but it's a learning curve, it's an experience, and it just means that I'm gonna know more for next year. It, it's probably a lesson to me to slow down, number one, and not always be running a million miles forwards and leaving the things behind that I once was enjoying. And also to do things bit by bit, to do things a little bit every day. If I was to have just spent 15 minutes every day in the morning, maybe after I had my breakfast, going down into the garden and just weeding a little bit, doing a bit of strimming, whatever it was, then the garden wouldn't look like that. Um, and so it's something that I'm gonna really work on. And it's something that I can also work on in the autumn because there's lots of planting that you can do in autumn. So that's gonna be my goal. Um, my dad is coming around on Friday to help with the garden and it's gonna be wet, I think, so we can't really do um, mowing. So instead, I think what would be really helpful from him is just to weed the vegetable garden. So then I can directly plant some things, maybe some carrots, maybe some pumpkins. I have to do some research on what I could plant, even just cover crop, just because it's something to learn. Um, flowers, I, I'm, I'm sure there's so many things that I could plant. Um, bulbs, I'm assuming, you know, potatoes, even if I just filled all the beds with loads of potatoes and shared them with my family. There's, there's always gonna be something I could do um, and that's what matters. I think that I went into it a bit too enthusiastically and planted way too much and bit off more than I could chew. But I, I, I think that if I stay on top of it, then it can be something that I gain a lot from. Roxy! Because I honestly, Roxy has been on one today. She has not stopped barking. Could you please come here? I think because Alex isn't here, she's way more nervous so she's trying to be more of a guard dog it brings me so much happiness like going down there and picking this sort of thing like i still here's something to remind myself of um 
we still have loads of things down there even if I've let it go to shit. <laughs> There's slugs all over the cabbages, the Brussels sprouts have been ruined. However, I was able to, not that they're proper vegetables, they're the leaves. I plucked all the leaves off of the uh, broccoli and I've got onions. So and there's even loads of pak choy down there that has survived. I don't know how it has, but it has. So I can pick all the pak choy, I can harvest loads of things and um, we, we move forwards um, and unpick it and sort it as we go. I think it's an adjustment living in a house of this size and feeling very enthusiastic about it, but then realizing how much goes into looking after a garden of this size, looking after a house of this size, running a business, running a household, um, you know, having employees, working with your family and making time for friends. You know, your thirties is a lot and I could not even imagine throwing children into the mix. But then you never know, if I had kids, maybe I'd just get things done more because you have to. Maybe that would be the, the kicker, it would motivate me. When you don't have children, there's kind of the temptation to just not do as much. So anyway, I have talked enough, time to make dinner. Here it is. This recipe is amazing. It's from Melissa Hemsley's Feel Good book, which if you don't have, order it now. It's um, vegan friendly, but it's got meat and everything in there if you're not vegan. Um, but it's basically like vegetable focused. And that's why I love her cooking because it's, you know, lots of people use that, I guess the phrase plant-based and this is what they mean. Some people use the phrase plant-based to mean when you're vegan, but not vegan in terms of like your lifestyle, but you eat vegan. But it's an amazing book for everybody just to eat more vegetables and eat healthy. And this recipe, it's like green pasta three ways. The basic recipe is essentially you take kale and peas, but you could interpret that in any way. You could um, use any sort of leafy, leafy green veg. So you could use spinach. I use the leaves on the broccoli outside. Um, you blanch it with peas, but you could swap the peas for edamame because I've got some edamame in the freezer. So you blanch it, you save that water, you put your pasta on to cook and then you blend it up with some cashews. I added lemon juice, um, uh, garlic, salt and pepper. Is there anything else in there? Garlic, salt and pepper. I added basil, but um, essentially, oh yeah, and loads of olive oil. <laughs> but she's got a few different versions. So the other versions she adds dried oregano, a pinch of chili flakes, um, and then pistachios and feta on top. So you could use the Violife Greek style. And then the other one uses some extra Parmesan, toasted pine nuts to go on top, olives to go on top. Um, and then there's a ginger and spicy sesame noodle version. So it's the same principle with the green sauce, but you're having it with, um, noodles instead of pasta and you're adding things like toasted sesame oil lime and soy, soy sauce or tamari great recipe if you're not a fan of vegetables i made it for alex he loved it and my sister made it for her husband too for tom and he also loved it and he's not you know i don't think he's massive on i know he likes broccoli but i don't think he's like massive on like really vegetable -y foods and they both loved it and I just think it's genius and it's so variable. So I'm absolutely loving it. And I'm putting it on my like food to have every week. We could definitely add nutritional yeast in there too. Pasta is cooked. I threw some, she recommends to throw some pasta water in there too to help it blend. And it's just so simple and so delicious. <laughs> Look 
looking absolutely beautiful and I use shell pasta because sometimes that's lovely for a change. I think I've been having rigatoni too much, but I'm so excited to eat this. It is such a good meal. Go get her book and try it out and you won't regret it. <laughs> I'm gonna make apple and blackberry crumble the first of the season. This is a recipe that I grew up eating and I put it in my first ebook because it's really easy to make vegan. You literally just use vegan butter, that's it. So we have oats, plain white flour, hazelnuts, walnuts, cinnamon, demerara sugar, light brown sugar, and of course, apples and blackberries. Apples from the garden, blackberries from the hedgerows near me. I'm gonna make double so that um, I have some. And then, um, well, I might, I might make double and divide it into three so that I can go and give some to my family because my niece has been ill. She's had a virus and now I think my sister's caught it. And then I know that my mum and dad love apple and blackberry crum crumble. <laughs> so I may as well make the same amount and um, just divide it up. Let me see what, what casserole, what dishes I have that I can divide it between. Slight, well, I need to figure out basically how much, maybe what I might do is just see how much I could make based on the amount of apples and blackberries I have, because then I could just make loads. And I am gonna film this whole thing in my dressing gown because it is raining outside and I don't wanna get dressed because I'm about to paint the hallway. I don't really fancy wearing painting clothes whilst cooking. And um, I'm not walking Roxy right now because I'm hoping that it's gonna get a bit better after lunch. If it hasn't, I'll just take her out anyway. But if it's bad, <laughs> that sort of mizzle rain, which gets you soaking wet, I like to just wait a little bit to see if it dies off and then I can take her out. So I'll make this crumble and we'll see. First things first, preheat your oven to 180. We need to switch the agar on because it definitely feels like autumn now. This dressing gown is from Sea Salt because people always ask me. Don't know if they still sell it, but they do lovely dressing gowns. So I am doubling the recipe. So the recipe is 50 grams of each nut. So I'm gonna do 100. I'm now wondering if should I triple it? Should I triple it? Well, let's see how many walnuts I have. No, I can't triple it unless I've got more in the cupboard. I'm gonna triple it and I'm just gonna use um, other nuts instead. So here's some pecans. So I'm gonna do, yeah. I'm gonna triple it because Alex is coming home. So there'll be some left for him to have. So that's a hundred and, it's a bit too much. Yeah, let's just do pecans and walnuts. A hundred of hazelnut. And then I will just do, is this tripling it? hundred, yeah. And then I'll do 50 of almonds. So you can kind of just use whatever nuts you have and they're just sort of add to the crumble on top. Add these to a food processor. And then just blend them until they are chopped, basically. That'll do. Um, I may need to do this in batches if I'm tripling this, because there's a lot of flour. So I'm gonna take this out, put it in the bowl, and just um, do it three times so that I don't overwhelm the food processor. Also, I'm debating <laughs> if I have enough sugar. If I don't, I've got dark brown sugar, so I can just substitute it, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we'll give it a go, we'll give it our best shot. lot 
of ingredients. You may need to do this at some point to loosen it because sometimes food processors get a bit stuck. I've decided I'm only going to double it because I just don't have enough ingredients of everything and it would be a shame to make it not quite right. And you want to blend it until it resembles like wet sand. And I like it like this because it, if you have those lovely big chunks, they get ultra crispy. So um, I'm going to empty this into this bowl and blend the second lot. Now we have the lovely job of peeling and coring and slicing the apples. I don't have an apple corer. Oh well. Um, I'm just going to sit at the bar stool and um, maybe watch a YouTube video and do it. I'm having... This is making me realise how annoying this task is and my mum used to have a um, apple corer and peeler. It was a really fun contraption that you put the apple on, you like twisted it and then it just took the apple skin off and cored it and it was so satisfying and considering we have apples in our garden we have got I think four apple trees um this is crazy but I actually only discovered another one this year um I wonder whether last time it didn't have any fruit because it looks newer than the other ones or it was just buried beneath the other trees because it's kind of um along the the division um, it's along the edge of the garden basically onto the road and it was just underneath three other big trees and then we've got an s is it called esperellid esperellid you know what i'm trying to say but my brain <laughs> is not catching up we've got one of those um along our trellis which is kind of the one of the main reasons i'm like i don't want to get rid of the trellis so i did think if we did move it you could move it onto where the sleepers are um, but that's a totally different type of apple. I think that's just an eating apple. In fact, I don't even know the, br the type of apple these are because though they are massive and they kind of look like cooking apples, a lot of them have this red color to them. And I just tried one a second ago and it's very sour, but it tastes delicious. Um, or maybe it's just in the supermarket, they only put the green ones on the shelves. Let me know if you are an apple expert. Um, these probably are just cooking apples. Um, but yeah, considering that we have so many apple trees and we get so many apples every year, like we end up having to give loads of them away. Um, I think it would be worth getting all of the tools for apples because it would encourage me to use them more. And if I had a, a machine that would just apple core and peel really easily, then I can make um, apple sauce. I, I was thinking that we should make cider, like 100%, um, apple juice, and everything. I don't know whether we've got the right kind of apples to make apple juice, but worth a try. I feel like I wanna do more research um, and it could be a fun little thing to do this autumn winter with Alex. Uh, his brother loves cider and I feel like, I don't love cider, but I think that if I was to make my own, maybe I would like it. Maybe it would be a bit more enjoyable because I would know that it ma I made it in my garden. Um, but yeah, I just, I was thinking then like, it's definitely worth, us actually putting the time in and making you know apple chutneys there's so many things that you could make um that would be really fun and rewarding but i'm definitely going to be making crumble constantly in the next few weeks and i think i should try some other recipes like some maybe like flaky crusty pies and things how many have we got one two three four five six seven eight nine um there's four left i'm not gonna do i'm just gonna fill up the chopping board that's what i said because it says four to six so that means about eight to twelve so i'll just do ten and i'll see how i go I was just sitting here thinking about the fact that I'm doing this right now in the middle of the morning on a work day 
and just feeling very grateful. Um, I think sometimes when you work for yourself, it's easy to get into your head or if life has been difficult, it's easy to get into your head and think, oh, for goodness sake, like these things are stressing me out or sometimes I have to work at the weekends or I have to work in the evenings. And then I'm here on a Thursday morning making apple and blackberry crumble for me and my family and that's my job like I'm sharing it with you and I'm filming it and I I'm in my dressing gown and I can show up on camera and you guys don't care and I just I'm having a moment of gratitude for where I'm at in life and it's been a very reflective and transitional phase for me and for Alex there's lots going on and it's just kind of teaching me a lot. Like when bad things happen in life, it doesn't have to be all bad. Like sometimes the worst things happen, they kick you out of, they kick you out of things and it gets you back on track. And that's how, that's, that's what's happened to us recently, um, or me anyway. And I'm just feeling very grateful and very positive. It was just making me think. And also another thing that I was just thinking was how much I thrive, sorry, I'm waving my knife at you how much I thrive when I know there's nobody coming to the house, which was making me think about, like we've had so many years of builders and I don't think that I've reflected enough on how that is not, it's just not fun. Um, if you're an introvert and you work for yourself and you work from home, having people in your space every day is, it's intense sometimes and it can really mess with your mind. Maybe some people wouldn't care, but me and Alex definitely, I think on reflection have voiced that we both have found that quite difficult. And so we, when this hallway is done, we're taking a really solid break from renovating or at least a solid break from paying people to renovate. And we're gonna be doing lots of things on our own because we've just got to the point where we're like, I just don't want, I just don't want anyone at the house. I just want to stop. And it's so expensive and it's just not sensible. So um, when the, yeah, when the hallway's finished, we've got our patio, we can work on our garden together, which is really, really, I'm so excited on all the things we can do in the garden. Um, I really wanna um, spruce up the office, like do a sort of in, inside the office, do a sort of um, makeover by ourselves and paint the outside of the office and clean the roof. And um, I wanna paint the house as well. I know that we wanted to like repoint and micro needle off all of the paint but it's just such an extensive job and I just don't want to do it this year so it looks a bit grubby and it's looked grubby ever since we've um you know left it because you're supposed to really top up the paint because it gets weathered so it really could do with it and if we're not planning on doing that this year or probably not even next year um we were originally but I just don't don't think we should then it would be really nice to paint it and make it look all fresh and lovely and we could paint the front door we could get a shed i was looking on facebook marketplace yesterday for sheds unfortunately the two i found had already been sold but it did give me hope that you can find old sheds that people obviously don't want anymore for a really good price um i was even thinking we could we could literally do the driveway i've spoken to you for a really long time about our driveway and what we want to do um, and I was just thinking, you know, I actually have seen people locally to me build their own Cornish walls and I've watched them do it. Like every morning I'll drive past and there's a little bit more of the wall that they've put together. And I think it would be a really lovely experience to learn how to do that. And there's only a small area and I'm pretty sure if we remove the rendering that's on the front, there will be some kind of Cornish wall beneath because there's Cornish walls like to either side of it. So, it could be a fun little project to just sort of remove the rendering, see what's underneath and just fix it up because we've got loads of granite in our driveway. And then I wanna render the, the walls that are out there now that just have like breeze block and paint it white and then, you know, work on, work on just making it look pretty out the front, put gravel down and just call it a day and just don't, I think that there's a lot of pressure with the era of Instagram and home renovations, and I probably contribute to it because I share all my fun renovations. When it becomes part of your job, you're like, I really need to show like fun things that we're doing at the house and renovation projects. And there's this insane pace in, at which other people do it, and it's just not realistic. It is a bit of a rat race. It's like keeping up with the Joneses, keeping up with these beautiful homes. And I get very like excited and I love beautiful homes. Like I literally studied it at university. I did a module all about manor houses. I've been obsessed with beautiful old homes for a very long time. So I get very excited and I just need to slow down. And it's a good reminder. So for the foreseeable, we're gonna be doing lots of the DI DIYs ourselves, lots of the projects ourselves and maybe only booking tradesmen in for, you know, like little jobs here and there to 
install a radiator or something. We're not going to be doing these big projects for a long time because most of the big projects are done. And I just think I've, I've realized that any of the, the other big projects, realistically, we could do ourselves. Anyway, there's my little ramble about renovating and um, just, just to expect for the foreseeable, lots of DIYs, lots of learning. And maybe that's quite fun because we're going to learn together. Anyway, I have peeled and chopped all my apples so I can start assembling my crumbles. So the tricky bit now, because I've doubled it, is to try and distribute it between these trays because I've only got two like medium sized ones and then I've got one that's a bit bigger. So it's a little bit of a puzzle, but I'm gonna give it a go. So I'll start with the apples and then we'll see. No, I think this works. Definitely couldn't fit them in two. <gasps> I thought that was a slug. I was like, I've like soaked these apples, peeled them and everything. How is there a slug? There wasn't a slug, it's okay. I made an error, I forgot to sugar the fruit underneath. <gasps> I'm gonna try and take some of this crumble mixture back and put a little bit of sugar underneath. Cause obviously apples, like cooking apples and blackberries are sour. So while there is sugar in the topping, you kind of need a bit of sugar underneath so that when you're eating it, you're not getting a mouthful, very sour fruit. I am so silly though for doing that. I can't believe I've done that. I can't believe you've done this. I can't believe you've done this. I personally love a lot of crumble mixture on top because it's like the yummiest part, but you could always use less, like you could reduce the amount. Cause I know I see some crumbles and they're like, there's a lot of the apple and blackberry and I just think, isn't the crumble part the best bit? Like I would have a crumble without, I would just eat this crumble cooked on its own, to be honest. And because I blended these nuts extra, cause I was gonna do triple, I'm just gonna sprinkle those on top just for added crunch, which is kind of a nice idea actually. I might do this in the future but probably not one for those who don't like nuts. I'm also gonna sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon just so it's you can really taste it. And the final thing is something my mum always used to do, which is totally optional, you don't have to do this, but it is yummy, <laughs> is to add just like little um, knobs of butter, so it really adds to the the crispiness on top. And as it melts, it will just it will just add a few little moments throughout the crumble that are ultra crunchy. And by the way, um, I always have a box of stalk because it's accidentally vegan and it's good for baking. It's just a really really good texture. It doesn't like melts too much um it just works i know some people probably don't who watch my channel probably don't like to use things like margarine so if you don't like to use margarine then you can there's what's it called naturally still technically margarine but the ingredients are more well it's organic number one but also it's it's made from like coconut oil and the ingredients list is a bit shorter what's in here i know i'm not claiming that this is healthy at all this is like a mixture of vegetable oils, water, salt, emulsifiers, loads of, yeah, things that lots of people don't like. So Naturally is probably a more healthy option, which is generally speaking what I have, but like 
when you're having dessert, health really isn't, isn't what you're thinking about, is it? You're thinking about the health of your mind and that is just as important, if not more, to be honest. I've just found the demerara sugar. This whole time, this whole time, um, I wasn't using demerara sugar because I didn't think I had any. And look what we have here. So I'm gonna sprinkle this on top because that's also nice to have a little sprinkle of this because you can taste it. Maybe my parents are gonna think this is too sweet, but it's not much, I didn't do much. This is what they look like. Oh, that's moved. So I like to keep like chunky bits like this. You don't have to crumble it up or blend it to the point of it not being like that because it just tastes so yummy. And then this goes in the oven for 30 minutes until golden brown. Keep an eye on it. If about halfway through the top is looking quite brown, you can just put a baking sheet over the top and then the apples and the blackberries can continue to cook. It will depend on your oven. I'm not gonna do all of them at the same time because then it will just slow down the cooking process and they may not cook evenly. I think I'm gonna do just two and then I'll probably cook mine a bit later on. But if I have the two, then I can deliver those to my family. And then I am well and truly gonna get dressed because <laughs> it's now the afternoon and if a delivery man comes to the door, that's gonna be embarrassing. Set timer for 30 minutes. Clean up time and then um, I'm gonna have my lunch and get changed. I'm gonna plan my day as well in my head of what I have to do. Cause I know I've got to get a paint layer on and every day it ends up being pushed and not happening. So, well, yesterday I didn't vlog and it didn't end up happening. I was just working all day. So we'll see what gets done. Look at that bubbling. Oh, it's steaming up. These are looking great. That's usually how you can tell that they're done, that there's like a brown kind of texture on top and you can see the blackberries and all the juices coming up through. This one, I'm wondering if this one needs a little bit longer though. What I might say is I'll deliver them when they've cooled down and I'll say just ch chuck them in the oven for five more minutes. But this may just be because this is a bigger, a bigger crumble, but they look delightful. I'm not gonna put mine in till later because I kind of want to eat mine straight out of the oven after dinner. Can I get mine? No. We officially have one coat. It's gonna be very difficult to show you because it's so dark. Probably down here is easier. I'm in love with the color and I'm really excited for when I can paint the skirting and door frames. Cause right now this is like um, just a, literally just bright white. I think it's like a trade Leyland um, eggshell. And we're gonna paint it like a, a creamy white, which is very like period home. And it will, cause right now this looks lovely. Don't get me wrong. This looks gorge. 
but um it's more cool tone so it'll add it'll add another layer hopefully and um all of this will be nice and cleaned up which will make a big difference but i just love this color so we've got it all the way down and it'll be really fun actually in the morning coming down here when it's lighter because it's um, a rainy day and it's also like half past seven maybe eight o'clock um so yeah you really <laughs> cannot see it so tomorrow i don't know i'm not vlogging tomorrow am i am i oh i don't know this video i feel like is quite i might review this footage this evening see how long it is <laughs> and then if it's fine I'll, I'll vlog tomorrow as well um i'm getting my hair done tomorrow and oh there's a little patch there that i've missed i'm getting my hair done tomorrow and um i might do some bits in the morning before no i'm gonna probably do a bit of work in the morning and then i'll go get my hair done then maybe when i come back i'll do some maybe not depends how i feel because it's friday tomorrow and i may just want to come home and relax because it's friday or maybe i'll have work to do at the computer on the computer it all, all depends but tomorrow i will paint the ceiling and or do this bench I need to sand it quickly first and then paint it. I think that I'll probably do the bench because that's more fun. <laughs> and I like to do the fun things first. Um, and the ceiling is not like, it's not like a necessity at all. It doesn't need to be done for the builders or anything like that. Uh, I need to text the builder. I keep on thinking I need to text him and I keep on forgetting to do it because I'm, I'm just, there's literally no point in me doing anything else. They requested that I do this much because um, obviously it means that then they can put the lights up and do the cupboards. And it is simpler for there to be a, at least one coat on. And then, yeah, when they go, I can do the second coat. And then probably, to be honest, when I, I'll do the second coat, we'll paint all the... It's going to take a very long time to do the woodwork because I've got one, two, three, four doors. No, I'm... No, even more. One, two, three, four doors. And then this door has no paint on it, so that will need another coat. And then I'm not sure whether I'm going to paint the living room door. I'm tempted because then it will all match. Um, but also it's quite nice that it's wood. Let me show you. But what I could do is obviously just keep the wood on the inside. It's just it's a very pretty door. Being all wood like this. But then you could paint it on one side and then leave it like this on the inside. I think I'll leave it till the end and decide. It's always open anyway. So it's not like it's visible, but I'll decide basically because I've got back door to paint, this door to paint, this door and the other kitchen door were painted when we did the kitchen. So that won't require too much. I'll do a light sand and just probably one coat. I imagine will be plenty. The front door and the back door will require quite a lot of sanding, potentially some filling, a um, bit of cleaning. And then the utility room door will need uh, like the sealant for the pine knots and I'll probably paint both sides just so that it's nice and will I will I no I won't bother there's really no point is there um and then I've got to paint all the skirting and then we've got to do the stairs the stairs however though it's not going to be um I don't know sometimes I just don't know whether I'm going to carry on or if I'm not because I kind of, now I've done this hallway, I kind of feel like why not just do the landing because it won't, it just, it, it's like I'm doing it so I may as well carry on because the landing just needs paint and I think we should just paint the same colour and it just needs a little bit of skirting um, upstairs and then obviously painting the woodwork. I'd love to add a little bit of skirting that it needs because I don't think that was ever finished. I think the when we bought the house, I think they were kind of like at the end of finishing this whole project. Um, I'd love to add some cornice. The issue is how high the ceiling is and it's over the stairs. So it'd have to be a ladder situation, but I feel like that would be quite cool. Cause then I could actually do my gallery wall and it would feel nice. Like coming into your home, walking up the stairs and it all being decorated. Just why not? What would be the point in me finishing this hallway and then not continuing up the stairs? And I think that I'm learning with renovating that sometimes trying to do things like perfectly or the ultimate way you want them done, stops you from enjoying your home in the meantime because I was like oh I want to change the carpets or I don't know maybe I would want to change the cupboard door up there but like 
I haven't tried painting it or um, cleaning, like I'd love to clean these carpets so they can have a new lease of life, painting the stairs so they look neat again. And it may just mean that I don't end up doing anything else because it would look lovely. So yeah, but I don't know how long this will take. This may carry on until Christmas because there's lots of little fiddly bits to do. And I don't know when the builders will be available now that we've had a bit of a break. And if there is a bit of a break, then I can do the landing. And I can also paint the back door on the outside and the front door on the outside. Not sure what color yet. Um, I'm tempted to paint the back door white because our, we've got stone at the back and all the windows are white and then the, the window for the garage is white. But I feel like the front door should be a color and I'm potentially leaning towards whatever color we choose to paint the office. I should paint the front door just so it matches. So there's a bit of a vibe. Um, we'll see. Anyway, that was a nice little six minute chat for you. So I don't know if I'm gonna be vlogging tomorrow. <laughs> official taste test to make sure that what I gave my family isn't disgusting. <laughs> oh yeah, that is delicious. So pleasing that I picked those blackberries and those apples. Makes it even tastier. <laughs>